I understood that yoga is my way, the thing that I should do, that I should practice. It's a great healing tool, healing power that I should give to other people. My conversation with Roman Churchnosa, a yoga teacher from Kyrgyzstan, was fascinating as we took a deep dive into the history of yoga in Kyrgyzstan and how it was illegal because of how the government knew that it was such a powerful practice. Trust me, this story sounded just like a movie. We also talked about Roman's travels to Tibet and how he studied not just yoga, but Kung Fu and Qigong as well. I hope that this conversation surprised you, delighted you, and made you more curious about yoga in Kyrgyzstan. If you're looking to tune into a podcast episode that is all about yoga in Kyrgyzstan, then this is the conversation for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. I'm your host, Lily Allen Duenas. Together, we'll talk about the world of yoga and we'll talk to people from around the world. Before diving into the episode, I wanted to invite you to head on over to my Patreon account. I would love your support and I'm thrilled to have this beautiful community space where we can do yoga together, meditate together, and you'll get access to exclusive content. Get ready for some private Zoom Q&As, free printable art, meditation recordings, and more. Follow the link in the show notes to get started or head on over to any of my social media channels or my website, wildyogatribe.com to hang out, get to know each other better and find out more about all the support and resources available to you. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. Namaste, family, and welcome back to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. Today is a beautiful day, and I am so happy to welcome Roman Chernosa onto the show today, along with his wife, Maria Chernosova. They are, and Roman is, a yoga teacher from Kyrgyzstan, and his wife is his translator today with us, as Roman mainly speaks Russian. So I'm excited to welcome Roman and Maria onto the show today. So Roman Chernosova followed this diverse athletic background in childhood and young adulthood, including wrestling and Kung Fu. However, Roman found solace and healing in yoga in Qigong after a serious illness in 1998. And he actually went to Northern Tibet and took courses and studied in India and in Russia as well. And that led him to develop the yoga mix system. So I'm really excited to hear more about his journey as well as the yoga mix system, something I don't know about. So thank you so much, Roman and Maria, for being with me on the show today. Hello. Namaste, Lily. We are very glad to be with you today. So excited. Thank you both. And I'd love to hear how yoga first came into Roman's life. Oh, no. It's all been very long. First time I got acquainted with yoga as a system when I was five years old with the help of my own father. Actually, my father initiated me into the yoga system. At that time, 70s, 80s, yoga was banned in our country and my father illegally tried to practice yoga with some poorly printed book translated from English. And it was interesting for me as a child because my father showed me some weird asanas, belly vacuum, breathing systems, and so on. They were rather easy for me as a child. He's so lucky to have had his father teach him yoga at such a young age and to become acquainted and interested in something that I feel like so many people didn't get interested in or introduced to until later. So I also know that Roman has a background in childhood in wrestling and kung fu, also called wushu, and other athletic pursuits. How do you think that has influenced his approach to teaching yoga? As many young boys, I was more interested in wrestling and wushu. They were more popular among boys 
And I started practicing this discipline. They made me strong. They made my body strong and my spirit strong. They taught me discipline, everyday labor, make trainings every day without missing. And of course, when I became a yoga teacher, I learned my students uh, to practice every day, to go step by step, to work out their bodies and never be worrying of some difficulties on their yoga. Wow, yes. Discipline is incredible to learn, especially as a child. And it seems like he had so much focus as well, just discipline and focus and such a passion for movement. And I know that definitely aligns itself with yoga and with Kung Fu and Qigong and all the things that he was studying. So I do know from reading about you, Roman, that yoga and Qigong, you found that after healing from his illness. Could you elaborate on how those practices contributed to your recovery? Only a few people know the story, actually. Uh, when Roman was 19 years old, he got seriously ill. On the one hand, he had uh, a lot of physical trauma because of martial arts and wrestling. And uh, generally, yeah, he got ill seriously. Doctors couldn't help him. They just didn't know what to do. And he was lying down completely. And one day he recalled about yoga. He found that poorly printed books from his father, and he started reading them. He stood up from his bed and tried to do simple asanas, the simplest one, but they were very hard for him that time. He just couldn't stand up for a minute even. But as his very focused person and he's got a lot of discipline, he practiced every day from day to day, and he felt that when our energy is getting back to his body. And from day to day, he would do more asanas, more complicated asanas. And after that, he was very lucky to meet a teacher. I know he was pretty young, correct? Yeah, correct. He was 19 only. Wow, that must have been so hard. And remind me, I believe that at that time, the books on yoga were illegal to have, right? They were banned in your country. Uh, yes. Uh, in our country, yoga was illegal, like 1980s, and it was banned. And people copied books and gave them to each other to learn these Eastern practices like yoga, kibon, ushu. Only after 1990s, I think, yoga became legal. Do you know why it was illegal? Uh, okay, um, it is a very interesting story, um, probably partly a legend, but well, we don't actually know. Uh, but people say that uh, first, uh, in the early USSR, yoga was actually legal. And people practiced it. It was okay. Indian yoga teachers were invited to work with uh, USSR cosmonauts who uh, flew to cosmos uh, on the rocket. And these yoga teachers trained them to breathe strong enough to go to cosmos. And there was one man who was an ocean researcher. And he also practiced yoga, different breathing systems, meditation, and he practiced for a long time. And that man had got a dream as he was an ocean researcher. He dreamed to meet Jacques Cousteau from France and work with him. But he couldn't do that because it was prohibited to uh, leave USSR territory and go to France. He made a very dangerous thing. He bought tickets to a boat trip to Philippine Pui, to Philippine Islands and back. And when the ship was uh, next 
the Philippine Islands as it was an ocean researcher, she found out that it is the quote is point to swim to Philippines Islands by himself without any water and so on. And she just jumped from the ship and swam to the Philippine Islands, but she was a little bit mistaken. And she had to swim for more, more than three days. She stayed in the open ocean. She used all his breathing techniques, meditation to warm up himself in cold waters. After this journey, she wrote a book and she wrote that he even met short and they were ready to eat him. But she imagined she just found himself a fish that can swim away from the shop and he really swam away. He reached Philippine Islands and from that island he traveled to France and his dream came to the Mad Jack of the Toe and worked worked with him. But uh, the government understood that practices of yoga, practice of yoga is a very powerful thing and it would be dangerous to let all people practice this system. So after that, uh, yoga was born. I'm so glad I asked that question and that Roman has the knowledge to explain all that happened because it's so dramatic. It sounds like it could be a movie. I too. I'm very grateful that yoga is no longer illegal. And I'm also grateful to know that the government even thought that yoga and knew that yoga was such a powerful practice that they had to, or they, they wanted to, not have people have that power. And, and that's sad, but it is incredible that they acknowledged how powerful the practice of yoga is. Yes, here we can see how powerful yoga is if you practice every day. Yes, with the dedication and the discipline. So it's a perfect segue. Maria, I'd love to ask Roman, what is this yoga mix system that he's developed? I'd love to hear more about it. Um. Ну, хотелось бы сказать, что как бы actually this yoga mix system doesn't exist worldwide. My training in the tiger and dragons of the northern Tibetan style influenced it a lot, influenced me and my training a lot. And when I started teaching yoga and came to a well-known yoga studio in our country, they asked me, what type of yoga do you teach? And I answered simply, yoga. But they answered, there are a lot of yoga teachers, and everyone teaches Pasta yoga. What is the difference of your own style? Because there are teachers practice, for example, fitness yoga or kundalini yoga, what is your difference? And I answered that on my classes, I make a lot of style. I mix classical hatha yoga with uh, Qigong because I like uh, Qigong as a system. I like asanas from Qigong and I include them as well, and even sometimes I use Kundalini Yoga to warm up my students, and sometimes I use adjustments of Asana from Aingar style because I also learned it, and the owner of that well-known yoga studio was listening to me and said, okay, it's a mixture, let's go with yoga me. <laughs> and that's how yoga mix appeared, but Today, I've got many students who learn from me and they call their style and they teach a yoga mix. And that's how yoga mix system appeared. <laughs> wow, that's incredible that it all stemmed from somebody asking him, what do you teach? And Hatha not being a good enough answer, it sounds like. Yeah. What I love too is that Roman has studied in northern Tibet and India and St. Petersburg, especially northern Tibet for me, that is incredible. It feels like a place almost no one gets to go to these days. So since Roman's training is so diverse, I was wondering how these experiences have enriched his teaching spot styles and more specifically, what aspects of these different cultures and teachings do he, does he incorporate in his classes? 
Ну, а, на самом деле, мне кажется, корни это все. Да, actually, uh, we study uh, yoga a lot in contact system, starting from northern Tibetan system of Japan. We also study the St. Petersburg yoga flow and in Ukraine. We also started from Andrew Sadersky, his yoga point three system, a uh, rather popular system on the well. We started in India, in Rishikesh, I can along with them. Uh, and so, when after his illness, he started from Northern Tribe system, but as he said, all this system, they were rather different. Actually, they have got one day there, one week when you practice a lot, you stop understanding that they are similar in their basis. And in uh, this uh, northern Tibetan school, uh, the teacher, which Roman met with his owner, first gave them some wrestling technique, which should strengthen their body, and Roman was the student, the adept of this school, which is called Viger and Dragon School, for seven years before the teacher gave him secret Tibetan practices, which strengthened his body so much that he could swim in winter in a cold mountainous river without any cold, could uh, walk uh, barefooted uh, on the snow and so on. And um, after the seven years of practicing uh, Tibetan style of Qigong and then the secret practices he uh, practiced uh, for three years absolutely every day um, because if he only missed one day, uh, that would change started from the very beginning, even though he practiced for, for example, one or two years before. So this is very specific. And after that, Roman says that yoga flow system, which he learned in St. Petersburg, gave a uh, different point of view for yoga practices, that it can be softer, uh, he understood how to work with the beginners and how to adapt his practices for the beginners, what to start with. And uh, when he practiced in Ukraine, a yoga 23 system, and also Roman is so glad that he had an opportunity to practice with Andrew Sajerski, and also he uses this practice in his own class. But he said that Himalayan school in Russia took all his yoga knowledge and united them. In Rishikesh, he understood how to unite all his knowledge and that his practice, that he makes it right way. Like when his Indian teacher told him, you are doing it right way, he was happy. Okay. Then after finishing uh, his studies in uh, Himalayan yoga school, uh, Himalayan Yoga Academy is called. After one year of practicing there, he was invited as a teacher and he worked as a teacher. Amazing. I've also studied yoga in Rishikesh and it was so powerful. It's amazing to hear how that was such a place of acknowledgement and transformation and how it all came together because Rishikesh definitely holds a special place in my heart as well. So Maria Roman, at this point, I would love to ask the question that I always ask every guest on the podcast, what is your personal definition of yoga? What does yoga mean to you? Roman said that for him, yoga is a lifestyle as his whole life. When he first uh, traveled to Rishikesh, to Yoga Academy, he, when he first came to that town, he felt like he's at home. And there I understood that yoga is my way, the thing that I should do, that I should practice, and that it's a good thing for self-understanding. And that's a great healing tool, feeling power that I should practice myself 
and give to other people to make them help. And I'd like to improve myself in yoga every day during my whole life. And yes, it's the thing that I live with every day. I love that. I love that it is what he lives with every day. I would also love to hear what is yoga in Kyrgyzstan like? In Kyrgyzstan, and I know I'm not doing the best job pronouncing it, but is it popular, growing? I know it was illegal in the past, but how did it, after it was made legal, did it continue to grow? And today, is it really flourishing? I'd love to hear a bit of the history. It's such a blast, no? Mm-hmm. Before uh, 1919, um, yoga was not actually banned, officially banned, but there was um, very little information about it. And uh, people just couldn't find information about it, about practices. And after um, 1990, when uh, youth heart disappeared and our country, Kyrgyzstan, uh, became independent, people uh, started uh, getting more and more information about yoga and other uh, Eastern practices. And, uh, but um, people in that time, People were not very rich, and most people couldn't afford traveling abroad to learn from well-known teachers. Only a few ones who travel abroad, and they brought here fantastic knowledge, fantastic for that time. They started sharing this knowledge about yoga practices, how to do that. Roman said that time was very romantic because uh, it was amazing to find some new information and practice it on yourself. When Roman became a yoga teacher in late 1990s, early 21st century, in our city there were only like five or six (laughs) yoga teachers, can you imagine that, for the whole city. We live in the capital of Kyrgyzstan in Bishkek city, and now it's a rather big city. There is about one million people living here. And there were only five or six <laughs> yoga teachers and maybe one or two yoga studios. And people were not very interested in yoga. When Roman started uh, and when he had five or ten people in his group, he was happy because he considered it a big. Mostly there were women because men didn't want time at all. But now Roman is teaching yoga. He has been teaching yoga for more than 20 years for now. And a yoga community is raising. Now there there are more than 200 people teaching yoga only in our city. And more and more people every day get interested in yoga uh, for some teaching courses. There are a lot of new yoga studios, which had opened last five years, actually. And men also started practicing yoga in the booth, which didn't happen. Before. Wow. Thank you so much for painting that picture and sharing with us the trajectory, the history of how yoga has developed. I would also love to hear about what is Kyrgyzstan as a country. Perhaps maybe share something about its history or geography or culture. I know that our listeners, and me included, we might not know that much about your country. So please introduce it to us. Special talk, Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is a very interesting country. It is situated in Central Asia. It is surrounded by big mountains, and the territory is mostly mountainous. The nature is very beautiful in Kyrgyzstan, and sometimes it is in cold mold Switzerland because nature is fantastic. We've got on this small territory of our country, we've got everything. We've got a fantastic, well-known mountainous lake called Ifkipun, which means a warm lake because it is never frozen even in winter though it is situated in the mountains and in winter 
Uh, it is all snowy, but the lake is never frozen because it is very salty. Not very salty. Uh, we swim in this pool. It's okay, but uh, salty enough not to get frozen. Also, we've got a small desert in our uh, country. We've got fantastic big mountain. There are many hikers from all around the world. For them, Kyrgyzstan is well known because they come here to climb our big mountain, it's a big snowy mountain. Also, we've got forests and really we've got tundra, uh, very beautiful, very different nature. It is very interesting to travel around Kyrgyzstan. I should mention that it is before it was situated on the Great Silk Road, and we've got a lot of places of power here. And when Buddhist monks come to Kyrgyzstan to visit these uh, places of power, and that's why I host Roman host retreat, a yoga retreat. People from Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, neighborhood country, uh, some people from Russia come to his uh, yoga retreat to practice yoga on the bank of uh, our Isipu Lake uh, because it is very beautiful uh, in summer. Um, it is warm enough, uh, like 30 uh, degrees uh, above zero, and we can swim. In winter, uh, it could be cold. Uh, for example, today, uh, it is 20 degrees uh, below zero <laughs> outside. And um, the weather changes very fast in our country. You, we should be prepared for everything, especially when we go hiking to the mountain. Oh, amazing. I really appreciate you sharing all of those stories and details about your country. And I'm so grateful for this time that we've got to spend together. And Maria, you did an amazing job translating. I'm so appreciative of you. Oh, it's so fantastic. Thank you, Lily, for this experience. Um, yes, for us, it's a new experience, but it was very relaxing. Thank you for the atmosphere. I was very happy to meet you here. Thank you so much, Roman, as well, for being here. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom and knowledge and experiences with us. It is vast, and I feel very grateful to have gotten to know you here on the show. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> hey friends, if you're a podcaster or are thinking about getting into podcasting, first off, welcome, and I'm so happy you're listening to my show. I also felt that it was long overdue to give a shout out to Zencaster, the software I use to record all of my episodes here on the podcast. So with guests from all over the world, I needed something that would be easy to use and would capture studio quality sound with my guests. Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensured that the recordings were safe, even if the connection was unstable. And trust me, it has been a lifesaver over the years. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code yoga and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Thank you for the gift of your attention today. If you feel called, please share this episode with someone who you think could benefit from it. Leaving a review would also be so appreciated. I also hope you can join me online on my website, wildyogatribe.com or on social media. I would love to get to know you better. I would love to share with you and to hear your thoughts. Send me a DM, send me a note, get in touch. It would be great to hear from you. And as always, be well, dear one, be well. Bye.